Yeah, exactly. You know, the, that's the key. And when if you do like shows like Antiques Roadshow or even something like Dragon's Den, of course, this is kind of a bit of a hybrid. We're talking to Scott Landon, uh, Four Rooms, brand new show on uh, CBC. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. And we are in your shop. Where, by the way, you're already a familiar face anyways because you're right here in South Granville and you've been around this location for 10 years. That's right. That's right. Right here, right, right in the corner. Here. You walk in, I don't even know where to start. Um, we buy a lot of stuff all over North America. I, I like buying utilitary furniture, stuff that's got you know, great aesthetics, uh, pleasing, um, lots of quality. Quality is the main thing that we look for, and you want it to be authentic. And there's always a story behind it, and that's what I think people want to hear. So we thought we might share the story of this cabinet. This is a perfect example. This is a really great 1820s Canadian example. I chased this piece for 20 years. Wow. Okay? We, sometimes, sometimes the responsibility as an antique dealer is also to rescue something, to make sure it's preserved for the next generation. This thing is in original condition, 1830s, made by hand at the time. You've got to remember what it was like in 1830 in Ontario. It was just bush. No power, no nothing. It survived all this time. It's straight. It's balanced, it's proportioned, it's got phenomenal value, and you can use it every day. So would you say that creates the most value? Because something absolutely. can be old doesn't necessarily mean it's valuable. That's another thing. You're absolutely right. Just because it's old, just because it's collectible, doesn't mean it has value. There's a lot of criteria that you know about, so when you buy something, make sure you're getting the right information. And we're going to try to give you that right information all morning long here. Jody and Riaz, for more details, you can go to scottlandonantiques.com or follow him on Twitter, slandonantiques. Hey, thanks very much, guys. We're here at Scott Landon Antiques. So we're going to talk about the criteria that Scott has when he buys some antiques. Also, what makes you an expert like this guy? Stay with us. You're watching BT. Here at Scott Landon Antiques on South Granville, as we went to break, you punched this really awesome punching <laughs> bag. Scott, tell us about this. Um, it's, a, it's a mutoscope punching bag, which leads me into the next thing. The criteria for buying stuff, okay? First thing is going to be aesthetically pleasing. It's going to be the first thing that gets you engaged in something. Then from there, what you'll do is step into the quality. Is it made well? What's the craftsmanship like? How is it put together? And then from there, if those two things are met, that's a big proponent, right? And then the third thing is going to be authentic. What is it? How to put value to something if you can identify it. In this particular case, it's a 1920s American Mutoscope punching bag in original condition. I like it. It's well built and I can put a label to it. That gives it value. So it came in and went out really quick. And what's really cool is you actually bought this for the first episode. We've got some footage of Four Rooms, which airs on CBC. Yeah. Uh, for anyone who hasn't seen the show, give us a little bit of a nutshell. Well, the premise is simple. You bring an item to the show, you get four offers on it. You're guaranteed to have four offers. I mean, not be four offers you like, but we'll identify what the item is. We bid against each other and you get a chance to sell it. Fantastic. So, so it's, it's, good. it's kind of a hybrid between Antiques Roadshow, something like Dragon's Den, a little yes, bit of a combo I, pack. Absolutely. Let's make our way over this way here because we were talking off camera a little bit about what makes someone an expert. Clearly, you are an expert. Let's say I go to garage sales all the time and I, you know, go and uh, hang out at the flea market or whatever. I must know what I'm talking about. I bought something at an auction. Yes, that's true. Um, and you will find the odd thing. But if you're actually going to get involved and engaged in buying stuff, spending some decent money on something, or want to curate your own collection, you need help. Just like when you need help in the law, you get a lawyer to help you. If your furnace breaks down, you get somebody to help you with that. An antique dealer, if you're like me and been in business 20 years, you're going to be able to add something to the whole package. It's worth coming to talk to somebody, be it me or whoever. In the, in the field that you're interested in. Wonderful. Well, uh, this is a fantastic shop, beautiful shop here on South Granville. Been here at this location for 10 years. This guy knows what he's talking about. For more details on the shop and, of course, the show, you can go to scotlandandantiques.com or follow him on Twitter, SL Antiques, guys. All right, sounds good. We are here at Scotland and Antiques, and I'm looking right now at a 1945 Military Globe. We're going to talk about the value of some of these antiques with the expert himself, Scott Landon. Stay with us. You're watching BT. I uh, tell you what, we're going to take you a bit back in time here at Scotland and Antiques, where we're talking about some of the antiques you have available here, but also what constitute a value. And if it says antique, does that mean it's going to be expensive? Not necessarily. I mean, there's a lot of value in the stuff, too. We could, some things we can't reproduce today at the cost that, we're, that it would take to make something like that. So there's actually value in that. Like, take this for ins instance. You know, it's a 1958 original. There's only one. The Yellow Pages is probably something that's going to be obsolete before long. It's art. It's wall art is all it is. It's a thousand dollars. What are you going to spend 
for $1,000 to get something interesting on your wall. And this is real. And it's a good story, because imagine telling your kids or your grandkids, yeah, back in the day when we had a rotary phone, first of all, what's that? And yellow pages. Yeah. Why are the pages yellow? What are these here? These are just great. This this is falls in that line of art collectibles as well. These are 1911 original distillery posters from France. Very rare to find the real ones. I, I had these in, I sold them really quick. Uh, but they're they're beautiful. I mean, they're they, they're graphic, they're colorful, and it speaks. It's a little bit of a story. And that's a whole other area of expertise. You, as an expert, being able to know if something is real or if it's not, right? Absolutely, it's part of the job. What do you have here? These, I'm just lucky. I bought these on our show four rooms. Uh, they're Hudson's Bay Métis jackets, original ones, and they traded with the settlers and all that stuff for for uh, food and utensils and all kinds of things. It's very hard to find these as a matching pair. Great, great piece of Canadian history. Great Beautiful piece. Beautiful and very fascinating. Uh, quickly, what's this here? Love that. That's uh, a one of a kind. It's out of the Northtown Theater in Chicago. You know Siskel and Hebert, those guys? Yeah. This is where they, this is where this is from. There was only one. This is an original. Great in the theater. Great in somebody's home theater. It's just sculpture. That one's got to be a bit more expensive, I expect. This is, is $5,500. $5,500. This, this is a little rare. But this here, Jody and Riaz, a chair like this, as little as how much? Two twenty-five. These are Detroit, 1950. Wow, see? So just because it's antique does not mean it has to be expensive. Best to talk to the expert, Scott Landon. Go to his website for more details or follow him on Twitter. SL, SL Antiques is the Twitter handle. Yeah, exactly. We're here at Scotland and Antiques, where, by the way, you might know that Scott's got this new show out on CBC called Four Rooms, but, uh, of course, many people here in Vancouver, the Lower Mainland, would know you because of your store here on South Granville. Yeah. So we've been getting a bit of a tour, some lessons, a bit of concept of value in your criteria. For someone that doesn't want to live in an antique store, they don't want to have all antiques all over the place, how can they kind of incorporate that history? A big part of our business right now is collaborating with interior designers, space planners, architects, where they just want to bring a little character, a little bit of history, a little bit of a story to new bills, renovations, restaurants, commercial spaces. We do a lot of that in town. And gives you some conversation pieces. Absolutely. Like, you know, it's so simple. I mean, for instance, this is like an 1820 Ontario fireplace mantle, easily incorporated in a new place. This is 19, sorry, 1860s barn board from Eastern Ontario. You can clad walls, do installations, create a modern concept in with using old material. It's easy to do. These doors, we had a set of six See these doors are big elevator shaft doors that came out of one of the oldest buildings in New Westminster. I've already put three of these into brand new construction, brand new homes, one in West Van and two of them in Prince George, and we're shipping one to Calgary for somebody else's new build. So it's easy to do. And they could be smaller pieces as well, Absolutely. or art pieces, something like this. First of all, I gotta know how much this Coca-Cola sign is. It's uh, 650, it's not that expensive. You know? So it doesn't have to be expensive to incorporate have those to be pieces expensive. in. And these lights up here are from a Detroit fire hall. I mean, they're they're 325 a piece. They're all done, CSA approved. It's so easy to put this in. But there's only three lights from the Detroit fire hall here. You know, so it's it's a it's a good story. And you know it, what it is about the story. You can hear the stories that Scott, of course, has to tell on Four Rooms on CBC. For more details on the show and of course the shop and on everything about this guy, you can go to scotlandandantiques.com. Jody and Riazzo, please follow this guy on Twitter. We got to. Build up his followers, SL Antiques is his Twitter handle.